Well, empty streets, shuttered shops and COVID-19 with downgrades, it all makes uh, for another turbulent week for business. And uh, to talk about how business navigates these stormy seas, I'm joined now by Jason Hamilton, who's a guest lecturer in uh, development finance at uh, the University of Stellenbosch Business School. Jason, welcome. Thank you. Now, as I said, there's a lot of moving parts uh, for business at the moment, not only now COVID-19, but a Moody's downgrade to deal with on top of that. What sort of questions should businesses be asking themselves uh, from an operational perspective at this time to ensure that they manage to stay in business through the crisis? I think there's a few actions businesses can take. Um, I, I think the one is, yes, there's a shock, but it also means that action needs to be taken, which means... Uh, very careful planning needs to be done over the coming days, weeks, and months. Um, I think companies that were in trouble financially and had a lot of debt prior to, to the pandemic hitting, uh, will, there's a big chance that they will not survive and, and come through, through this successfully. I think companies who did have very low levels of debt, companies with good operating margins prior, will be the ones who will be able to navigate the coming weeks and months successfully. Um, we are obviously have seen action by government being taken with regards to the interest rate and further stimulus packages, which will also assist. Uh, but again, we, the pressure will be felt, especially on your smaller retailers, SMEs, etc. It's great news that we, we have, I think this morning, saw that business partners will be um, distributing a lot of the, the, the assistance that some of the private individuals and obviously government also has made available to, to SMEs. And the quicker that can hit the ground, the better. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, time, I think, also with, with Moody specifically. Um, yes, it is a shock. It's not a great time, time for this to happen. But a lot, uh, a lot of that has already been priced in from a sub-investment grade point of view over the last couple of years. So I think although there will be some capital outflows, and we saw the rand this morning also, I think, hitting about 18 rand to the dollar, um, there's some element of this was to be, to be expected. I think also on the Moody's front, uh, they have been quite, quite verbal or hinting towards giving South Africa time. So I think the fundamentals still remain the same. So I think there's a very clear path that uh, Tito Boweni um it's laid out in, in his budget for a recovery. Um, and I think, again, once we've emerged from this over the next three to four months, to stick to that, we've got an ability to build something great going forward. Now, Jason, with that, I guess every business should be going through some form of uh, operational triage in their business, deciding what to cut, what to save, and, and where to focus their energy to ensure that they get the best return on effort. So what advice would you have for business owners on, on how they approach this exercise in trimming down and ensuring that they don't cut uh, so much fat and uh, start cutting into muscle and into the bone? We've been debating this um, as well, and it's a very, it's a very difficult and complex answer um, in that if you look at the SMEs and you look at even your listed entities, and, you, and, and I know the, the real example we can refer to now is, for example, Edcon. Even at that level, um, you're sitting with companies that, that can't, in the very short term, uh, afford to pay certain of their bills. The focus has always been to try and retain as much of the employees as possible. So I think the one thing would be to downscale as much as possible on some of the expenses, to defer some of the expenses um, to the larger uh, institutions that have the ability to weather the storm. Um, obviously, there's the talk to the banks, and I know a lot of the banks have been very vocal on where they will support. Um, there is a view that they should be more vocal, but each and every one have indicated that they have made funds available, um, and it's going to be dealt on a deal-by-deal -deal basis, which also means there needs to be a proactiveness from business to say, get your plan in place, understand how the pandemic is going to alter, the crisis will affect you over the next, I would say, month to six months, and be very clear with, with that plan and approach your financiers uh, to see where they can assist. Obviously, the likes of deferment of, of payments, capitalization of interests, uh, talking to your landlord, for example, to push out the, the big expenses uh, is something that is crucial to do. Retaining the employees or trying to pay them some level of, of living wage or stipend, I think, is also crucial because, again, as soon as that 
dries up, that's where the pain will be felt the most. Jason, SMEs have been expressing a degree of frustration at the moment with the, the various programs that are on offer from government to the Solidarity Fund, uh, from the private sector. We heard that Patrice Mazzepi added a, a further billion rand to that fund over the weekend. But just with the practicalities of getting assistance, of landing on web pages and finding that the web pages are not loading, there, there's a, a degree of frustration. What advice would you have for businesses looking to access the various programs on offer? I think there's a, there's a few points we would like to note. I think one is that um, government has acted very quickly in, in getting some of the stimulus out there. So we will experience some teething problems. And we know that all the right people are actually working on this to make it as accessible as possible. I think also we saw this morning that uh, business partners, um, who's got a national footprint uh, with branches all around the country, has been roped in to assist in the, dispersing a lot of the, for the funding made available by by the Solidarity Fund. Um, and uh, we also saw that um, I think it's important for for individuals and, and companies to obviously, as a first port of call, approach their funders, their financiers, their banks uh, for assistance. That was Jason. Oh, sorry. Can we edit that out? Cut. Okay, okay. That was Jason Hamilton, a director of First River Capital and guest lecturer at the University of Stellenbosch Business School with some practical advice on how businesses uh, can approach this period of lockdown and ensure that uh, they get through a very difficult period. It's only March and already it feels like uh, 2020, which started with so much promise, might be a year that is written off for so many. Mm -hmm.